Welcome to this episode of Bounded in a Nutshell. Remember to take a moment to click on the link below to donate to a very special organization. Figure Skating in Harlem is the first organization in the world to combine the power of education with the grace and discipline of figure skating. It is dedicated to developing confidence, leadership, and academic achievement in young girls from low-income backgrounds. The numerous stories of success from its alumni owe a great deal to the unique blend of mentoring and self-expression that is championed by FSH. Remember, no donation is too small or too large to keep the dream alive for these exceptional young girls. Thank you very much. Enjoy the show. You know, I was just going to start by apologizing for my face, which is mine instead of Lily's, but also uh, is uh, very tired because our child was up uh, most of the night. So they're sleeping still. We may be tag teaming this as it goes along. Um, and uh, she, she, yeah, I was just, she may tag me out to go to <laughs> breakfast. Um, and then, uh, so if you're later on in the, in the, in the event, uh, maybe you get uh, the 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 jus, you know, the real the entree. Um, but here's your caprizi. Um, <laughs> Stop being so don't don't put yourself down like that, Hamish. You know, caprizi is my great. favorite part of the meal. That's when I'm. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's uh, make sure all the mics are turned off and um, Kim, launch yeah. off. Great. Um, I'm going to do, um, hi. Hi. I'm going to do, uh, Helen from All's Well That Ends Well. Oh, great. Hey, can you no. just tell me, can you just tell me, uh, where, where, where it is? I want to have this, the thing here. I'm yeah. Be funky. This is my first master class. I mean, my life is a master class. But. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, it's act one, scene three, towards the end-ish of the scene, I believe. Do you have a line number? Let's see. I do not. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No. This is great. I'm I'm in the zone. I'm I'm in the area now of my illustrated Shakespeare. So that's <laughs> that's pretty good. There's a whole back and forth between the countess and her, and then there should be like a big chunk of the that's her monologue, visually. Okay, yeah, I have that. Um, can you just tell me tell me a little bit of the story before what's going on before it? Yes. Um, so Helen is deeply, madly, worshipfully in love with Bertram, who is the Countess's son. And um, she knows that she can never be with him because he's noble and incredible and she's not any of those things. And he's just left to go to Paris um, to be with the king in Paris. And um, the Countess has heard from various servants that Helen is in love with him. So, and she already knew that. And so she calls her in and uh, does a, a, basically messes with her and says, you know, you're like a daughter to me. You're, you know, making Bertram your brother. And Helen sort of is like, no, I don't think that I'm, he's my brother. And um, she finally is like, everyone knows you're blushing, you're turning pale, just, just, Admit that you love him, and then she confesses. Okay, that's perfect. Yeah. I like that setting the table like that. That's helpful for me. Thank you. I mean, I know this play perfectly, and I, I'm going to ask the same question for the Hamlets as well. So, go ahead. Great. <laughs> Let me just. Okay. Also, I'm just, I guess I'll look at the camera. Is that? It doesn't matter, it's for you. You right. don't need to look at the camera, you can look at the wall. Oh dear. That can't happen. That was my mother calling. Oh. Okay, go ahead, sorry. No, it's fine. Then I confess. Here on my knee before high heaven and you, that before you and next on the high heaven, I love your son. My friends were poor but honest, so's my love. Be not offended for it hurts not him that he is loved of me. 
I follow him not by any token of presumptuous suit, nor would I have him till I do deserve him, yet to never know how that desert should be. I know I love in vain, strive against hope, yet in this captious and intenable sieve, I still pour in the waters of my love and lack not to lose still. Thus Indian-like, religious in mine error, I adore the sun that looks upon his worshiper, but knows of him no more. My dearest madam, let not your hate encounter with my love for loving where you do. But if yourself, whose aged honor cites a virtuous youth, did ever in so true a flame of liking wish chastely and love dearly that your Diane was both herself and love, <laughs> then give pity to her whose state is such that cannot choose, but lend and give where she is sure to lose, that seeks not to find that her search implies, but riddle-like lives sweetly where she dies. That's lovely. That's terrific. Thanks. Um, where, where do you go? Where did you go to school? Where are you from? I went to NYU undergrad uh, for musical theater, but I'm from California. Oh, really? What part? I'm in California right now. Yeah. You can tell by my books. Mm -hmm. California books. Uh, Fremont. It's in the Bay Area. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, I, think that's, I think that's terrific. I just, uh, you know, I, I, th you, you, I hope this is uh, okay to say. I think you seem very charming and very funny. I mean, do you do a lot of comedy stuff or? Yeah, lately, I've, yeah, mostly comedy and just now starting to do more dramatic things. Um, I would just be interested to hear, hear you do it uh, uh, again and just uh, like, you know, be care the. I would say just be. You do, don't. You don't try to be too charming with her, or, or woo her, or be funny. Just as like an experiment, um, try it, sort of like more. Do you know that uh, like the, um, Hermione sort of thing? Like try to just. And this was probably wrong for the play, but it might be fun to try. Just uh, don't smile and make it really like, uh, uh, make, make it, not, not that the stakes have to be life or death, but just yeah. um, really make your argument. Mm -hmm. try, try just really making your argument. And... Um, Yeah, and uh, and uh, I got a little bit lost going yeah. through, so I think just like uh, try not to uh, break it up too much, you know. Yeah. Um, but you love this person, and uh, you know that's a that's a gift that you have, and uh, you deserve them. So try just go for that. Go for that. Maybe that's fun. Then I confess, here on my knee before high heaven and you, that before you and next unto high heaven, I love your son. My friends were poor, but honest. So's my love. Be not offended, for it hurts not him that he is loved of me. I follow him not by any token of presumptuous suit nor would I have him till I do deserve him. Yet never know how that desert should be. I know I love in vain, strive against hope, yet in this captious and intenable sieve, I still pour in the waters of my love and lack not to lose still. 
this Indian like religious in mine error, I adore the sun that looks upon his worshiper, but knows of him no more. My dearest madam, let not your hate encounter with my love for loving where you do, but if yourself, whose aged honor sights of virtuous youth did ever in so true a flame of liking wish chastely and love dearly that your Diane was both herself and love, oh, then give pity to her whose state is such that cannot choose but lend and give where she is sure to lose, that seeks not to find that her search implies, but riddle-like lives sweetly where she dies. Oh, I love that. That's, that's really, that's great. What a great speech. You did that very well. Thank you. Um, it's interesting, uh, Hamish, what you said about the we know it's a comedy we know there's it's a comedy sort of thing and the difference between okay we know that's the world but the reality of the moment was really important that you're making this is life it is the stakes high and what Hamish did and Hamish you can tag on you can let me know if I'm on the right track with this is that yes we know it's a quote-unquote funny play just like it was a whatever but the point of it is that your character here is all the things you said about you might not be worthy for him and you don't admit that her, it, the stakes are that high. Yeah. And that honesty, you know, brought us into the story. You know, Hamish, I'm sorry to jump in, but. No, no, I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I was also just able to follow it a little bit better. And I think that that's like, there, <clears throat> there are a couple spots in there uh, where they do that sort of midline jump back and forth. Mm. Um, thing which is so fun and co complicated but it, it, if, as long as I can follow your main intention and what your heart really is desperate to get to through it then um, you can lace those other things in later but those sort of like smart things if you start with them then we can right. lose the overall argument you know um, Absolutely. That, that was terrific. That's good. Thank you. That was great. Thanks, Kim. Thanks. Lovely <laughs> stuff and great adjustment, by the way. Really, you know, okay. and it's, it's not, and also I didn't realize how it's a very tricky speech, especially towards the end of it, isn't it? You know, it's like yeah. um, it, it gets quite, you know, the layers upon layers upon layers and stuff. But that was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Do you have any? Okay. That's right. Yeah, okay, go on. We're going on. Bye. No, 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 no. You have a couple minutes. Any questions you have for Hamish, Kim, while you're on? Um, um, no questions. That was just something that I struggle with in general with performing anything is crazy, horrifying nerves of like blackout. <laughs> when I'm saying my name in front of a group of people, I'm like, I want to die. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> I don't know why I became an actor. Um, so it's very helpful to hear things that are rooted in like the scene work and and the objective that can like ground you when all these other things are happening so I don't get out of control and just like reconnecting with what do you want what's happening um make your argument like uh, just a couple of simple things is really really helpful I think I think that's what what helps me most when I get most nervous is um uh, or g caught up, you know, in the in, in my ego and like wanting to do a really great job is is just you know, always just keep going. No, I have a job to do. I have to serve this story. I gotta get this part of the plot across. And yeah. How do I do that? Um, sometimes that helps a lot. Yeah. And breathe. And breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kim. Totally. Lovely work. <laughs> Okay, who's next? Greg. Hey. Hi. Hi, Hamish. Nice Hi. to meet you. It's nice to meet you too. What What are you doing so that I can do the flip through while we talk? Sure. Um, I'm actually doing uh, a contemporary piece, so it's oh, um, 
what would Crazy Horse do? Yeah, toss that out. Let's give him a, <laughs> let's give him a break. <laughs> What would Crazy uh, Horse do? Who's that? Yeah. What would Crazy Horse do by Larissa Fast Horse? Okay. Um, do you need to know anything else before? Or? Uh, just yeah. Tell me. Just tell me. Uh, like what happened? What's going on before the speech starts? Or whatever? sure. So um, it takes place on a reservation in the Dakotas, and um, this uh, this guy has come home to basically take care of his twin. Uh, who is like bipolar and basically convinced him to um, have a suicide pact. They're both the last members of their tribe and neither of them want to be alone in the world anymore. Um, so he comes home and he actually, he gets falsely arrested um, and gets beaten up by the cops and this is him coming home that night and talking to his sister. Talking to his sister, okay. Yeah. Um, cool, great. Tonight when the agents were taking us out of the clinic, I couldn't stop thinking about you and your stupid meme. So I yelled, this is what Crazy Horse would do. And I fought. The Indians all cheered, and I felt fucking great as they wrestled me into the car. Then this huge fed looks me straight in the eyes and says, who the fuck is Crazy Horse? It was like he ripped my heart out with his fist. This guy leans in and says, is Crazy Horse the ringleader? I said, Crazy Horse is the greatest Lakota war chief in history. He defeated Custer. They're building the world's largest monument in his honor. And he says, too bad, could have cut yourself a deal. I rode in that car alone and shit got simple. All my life has been focused on meaning something in this world. And, and I thought you screwed that up by going crazy. But in that car, I realized we have been fighting all our lives against an enemy that doesn't even know we exist. We were mowed down and forgotten. We're mulch. I swore if I ever got back to you, I would never let you go again. We do it tonight. On our terms. Together forever. Womb to tomb. Oh gosh, that's an intense. Uh, that's an it's, intense. it's yeah. It's like uh, the real challenge with this is like, I feel, <sighs> I feel so connected to what this man is saying and I just find it, I find it really hard to, to get myself really to that place, uh, to jump into what I feel like is probably the crux of the play and, and, and to emote from that place just sort of like out of nowhere, I find really hard. Well, yeah, you'd have the run up, right? To, yeah. Usually. Um, so that's okay that you were that's the this is artificial this is an artificial uh situation <laughs> right now yeah um, so we don't have to worry about you don't have to worry about doing that do you have a do you have siblings mm -hmm. yeah um and 
I don't know. I, th- you know, I thought that was great. And you're obviously very emotionally uh, there for it. Uh, where, where did you go to school? Columbia. Oh, God, that's a terrible institution. <laughs> really, I missed, I missed your mother by a year, but oh, I got in. Yeah, yeah, so. No, I can tell you're very good. Um, <laughs> uh, I see that she's on now. Um, uh, well, I guess uh, the thing that I would say is, um, I mean, this is this is that was terrific. This is just super basic stuff, you know. Uh, uh, do you do you do you need your uh, glasses for? for this um how do you see without your glasses on uh by smell no i i usually have <laughs> contact, i usually have contacts but i haven't been able to refill them since all of this has happened so. do you like uh, do you like being able to see things really well with the w- when you're acting or is um, it sometimes I, not having them on? for a long time for a long time i i was like going on stage blind without contacts or glasses and um I realized in grad school that it made my eyes really, really lazy. Um, so like my eyes would sort of like move all over the place. And um, yeah, so like I, I I enjoy being able to see what I'm looking at. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I can take these off. I mean, I'm not, I can, I can see the wall. It's no big deal. Yeah, no, I think that would just, just for shits and giggles, I think do the, do the, and then, um, uh, I, I just would be interested in you. What, what, what do you think? I mean, this is just like an intention thing. Like, what do you, what's been holding your sister back from, or, or have you been the one that hasn't wanted to do it yet? Who's holding back at this point? Like he has been holding back. I think, um, it's a really complicated play. Um, I think he, this is the first time that he believes that there is nothing left for him. Um, that oh, there is. And why does he have to tell her this? Why does he have to tell her this? I think part of it is, part of it is an apology for not believing him for not believing her Mm -hmm. and telling her that she is right, that she was right. Um, He's been, he left the reservation to try to make a life for himself and he comes back and it's everything that was there before. Well, do do, do this for me then. Um, Just do the speech again and, uh, and you can pick it up wherever you want to do it. But, uh, just for this is not the play it sounds like or what the situation is but uh do it as if she doesn't want to do it she do it as if your sister <clears throat> it has convince, her, convince her to do it yeah just do it yeah convince her to do it but like she she has her own personal reasons maybe for wanting to do it but these are the real reasons it, you know this thing that you've learned to tonight has to be said now. It has to be the final thing that, uh, that makes this ritual that you guys are making have meaning. So really ma- make her just, and, and just, do it, just do it a little bit quicker. Don't worry about the emotion and, um, and just like, um, she's been dragging her feet try it with like she's been dragging her feet if you want to stand up and go around or whatever but or just sitting is fine too but uh but like she's been dragging her feet and tonight you got to convince her that tonight's the night because what's just happened to you tonight when the agents were taking us out of the clinic i couldn't stop thinking about you and your stupid meme So I yelled, this is what Crazy Horse would do, and I fought. The Indians all cheered, and I felt fucking great as they wrestled me into the car. Then this huge fed looks at me and says, who the fuck is Crazy Horse? Stop stop for one second. Go back. This is a crazy story, too. 
Tell her the, that, like, you can't believe, oh, I have that Don Quixote, I have a tattoo of that. Uh, up there. Um, also do the, yeah, just like, the, just like, go, go, keep going. Go, go back, go again. Just like, this is a crazy story. Okay. Tonight when the agents were taking us out of the clinic, I could not stop thinking about you and your stupid meme. So I yelled, this is what Crazy Horse would do, and I fight. The Indians all cheered, and I felt fucking great as they wrestled me into the car. And then this huge fed looks at me and says, who the fuck is Crazy Horse? It was like he ripped my heart out with his fist. This guy leans in and says, is Crazy Horse the ringleader? I said, Crazy Horse is the greatest Lakota war chief in history. They're building a monument in his honor. He defeated Custer. And he says, too bad. Could have cut yourself a deal. I rode in the back of that car alone. And shit got simple. All my life has been focused on meaning something to this world. And I thought you screwed that up by going crazy. But in that car, I realized we have been fighting all our lives against an enemy that doesn't even know we exist. We have been mowed down and forgotten. We're mulch. We lost before we were even born. I swore if I ever got back to you, I would never let you go again. We do it tonight. We do it tonight on our terms. Together forever. Womb to tomb. Okay, great. I think that's really fun. Uh, 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 and uh, this is the, I mean, this is not, that's not how you would do it in the play. You do your own thing, this, whatever. This is just for us talking and wor working and playing right now. And uh, I, I, and I do think though, one thing, uh, make sure your ideas, may, these are, there, there are like a lot of different ideas in that speech. Yeah. They occur to him and it's more exciting, I would, I think perhaps to an audience, if you're, if they're occurring to you in the moment as you're telling the story, and that'll happen with breath, breathe between the ideas. Okay. Uh, you have like a deep emotional thing there, but you can do that in your sleep. You can do your emotions in your sleep. You have access to it. You don't need to worry about that. Don't worry about being deep or having a volcano. You got it. What is exciting is watching you discover the emotion because the next idea has come. And breathing between the lines, I mean, Chuck, Chuck, you know? I, I, I completely agree. It's, it's so interesting that the first time you did it, I, I was getting the story, but Greg, I think, you know, we're very honest in this. I think you, you were sort of slightly doing it a bit for yourself, Greg. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, and then yeah, you got absolutely. the note from you got the note from Hamish, which is acting. It's I've said this. I'll keep repeating it. Is that we have no responsibility for our own emotional lives. Do you know what I mean? Like in life, when you're doing something, you're always doing something to the other person. And the whole point of this speech is that you've come into this room after this crazy story to tell your sister, "Today is the day. We're doing it now." Do you know what I mean? It's not about, I feel so sad about this whole and they don't get it. It's about, you know what, you were right. Those motherfuckers don't get it and we're doing it now. And that's the sort of attack that I think Hamish was talking about. And it's funny because I, you know, I, I think he said that you might not do that in the play, but that's actually what the goal of it is, is to say, yeah. you know, I've been through this and you were right, sis. I'm not letting you go till we're dead, you know, because they don't get it. And there's a million ways to experience emotion also. It's not necessarily just crumbling. What happened in this last take you did was in angry tears that they don't fucking get us. You know what I mean? And that's interesting also, you know? 
So I think it, keep your focus always on the other person as to what it is you're trying to achieve here. And the whole yeah. point, this whole crazy story is almost an aside to get to the point that we're doing it tonight. Do you know what I mean? So I know we, 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 I, we might start running a little bit over, but I'm really desperate to see you come in with an even more frenetic energy about this. It's adrenaline. You've been in a cop car. You fought the cops. They forced you into a car. People were cheering you. And in that time, you talked about cops and you told this FBI guy to fuck off. You don't get it. And you know what, sis? We're doing it. Just, just give us that version of it. All on her and all on that energy you're bringing in, you know? And see where that takes you. Hamish, is that okay? You happy to see this one more time? Sure. Great. What did mean? So I yelled, this is what Crazy Horse would do. And, and I fought. And the Indians all cheered. And everyone, I felt fucking great as they wrestled me into the car. And then this huge fed looks at me and says, who the fuck is Crazy Horse? It was like he ripped my heart out with his fist. This guy leans in and he says, is Crazy Horse the ringleader? I said, Crazy Horse is the greatest Lakota war chief in history. He defeated Custer. They're building monuments in his honor. And he says, too bad. Could have cut yourself a deal. I rode in the back of that car and shit got simple. Everything in my life has revolved around meaning something to this world. And I thought you screwed that up by going crazy. But in that car, I realized that we have been fighting all our lives against an enemy that doesn't even know we exist. We were mowed down and forgotten, we're mulch. We lost before we were even born. I swore if I ever got back to you, I would never let you go again. We do it tonight on our terms. Together forever. I lost it. <laughs> but, 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 you, but you were there and you knew where you were. So that was yeah. great. You that was great. That was true. Yeah. yeah. There's, take the pay. There's, a, there's an element. I'm, I'm a very calculated actor. So it's like, I, <laughs> yeah, but like the, the letting go and just breathe, breathing it in, I think I can explore that even more. I think I, it can allow the ideas to sort of, exist i don't have to push them i can just provide them yeah yeah just breathe you'll be surprised by the the yeah what uh what 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 your lungs do that your brain your lungs are so much smarter than your brain i gotta tell you and also that's you know a few people a few people you know we, we don't want to pay pay for someone who knows what they're going to do next so that's great Great. Thanks. That was great. Well done, Greg. Nice work. Thanks, nice yes, thank you both. All right. So Paul is up. Hey guys, how's it going? Hi. How are you? <laughs> Good. Grand, hey. Amos, grand. Oh, great. What are you going to be doing? Uh, I'm going to do a piece from Winter's Tale, Leontes. Oh, great. Um, and just. Uh, where are you? Oh, there you are. Uh, and just, okay. Which, do you know the, the, the scene in the act? I know the, it's, it's from act one, scene two. Um, <laughs> so it's basically between when Polizinos and Hermione go off and Camilo comes in. Yeah, okay, great. Um, yeah, go ahead in your own, uh, uh, I, I was gonna, yeah, so, I, well, I know what's going on. Okay. <laughs> Great. Okay. To your own fence dispose you, you will be found, be you beneath the sky. I'm angling now. Though you perceive me not, how I give lie. Go to, go to. She holds up the net, the bill to him. 
and arms her with the boldness of a wife. You are allowing husband. Gone already. Inch thick, knee deep, or head and ears are forked one. Go play, boy, play. My mother plays, and I play too. So disgraced the park, whose issue will hiss me to my grave. Contempt and clamor will be mine now. Go play, boy, play. There have been by much deceived cuckold air now. And many a man there is, even at this present, now while he speaks this, holds his wife by the arm and little thinks she has been sluiced in his absence. And his pond fished by his next neighbor by Sir Smile, his neighbor. Nay, there's comfort in it. When other men have gates and those gates opened as mine against my will. Should all despair that have revolted wives, the tenth of mankind would hang themselves. Physic for it, there's none. It is a bawdy planet that will strike where it is predominant. And tis powerful. Think it. From east, west, north, and south, be it concluded. No barricado for a belly. No. It will let in and out the enemy with bag and baggage. Many thousands of them have the disease and feel it not. And now, boy, that's great. That's great. Uh, so is this the first time that Leontes does the, the, the direct address in the, or soliloquy, soliloquy? Yeah, I think so. I think he has maybe a couple of tiny little kind of asides thought to himself while he's watching them together. And they're kind of like, are you okay? Your, your mind seems elsewhere. But I think it's the first time he has a proper, proper kind of soliloquy or proper, proper direct address, yeah. Uh, I would, uh, you know, my my tack on it, I would mm. say, because I I done it, you know, I I uh, I did. We were talking about Dan Sullivan the last time, uh, who and he was like uh, with these soliloquies, because I was like, oh yeah, it's direct address. I'm talking to the audience. Well, he's like, who do you think you're talking to? Uh, when, and I'm like, well the people out there i mean there's like all these people and mm. uh and then there's all this uh and especially like the when we were talking about the rogan peasant slave and how that's like such a great you know who calls me villain uh, you know mm. uh, uh and you know it can become like a real call and response with the uh am i am i a coward am i a coward right mm. and then sometimes you get an audience member saying yeah <laughs> um and uh yeah but anyway the point of that was dan said no don't don't do that <laughs> don't talk to the <laughs> that's a terrible idea um but i never have known how not to talk to uh, and and i feel like i should figure it out better uh it always just like uh worried me too much but what i would ask you to do is um uh really m pick somebody pick a friend that you're okay. that you're talking to uh okay. for this and really describe to your friend this fucking this fucking this whatever what you're seeing and cool. really 
you know, the emotional stuff, again, you can just like, they're, they're like new ideas. I mean, these are like discoveries that you're making. Don't act the discovery. Just tell this guy each sentence, each thought you have, and then the next one will come. Don't worry about getting ahead of the next one. It's, okay. it's written down there. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but just like pick a, pick a person and, uh, and tell that person what you're, uh, what yeah. you're seeing. Make it a, make it a, a uh, whatever dialogue. To your own bent, dispose you. You will be found. Be you beneath the sky. I'm angry now. So you perceive me not how I gave line. Go to, go to. She holds up the nab, the, the bill to him, arms her with. The boldness of a wife, or allowing a husband. Gone already. Inch thick. Knee deep or head and ears, a forked one. Go play, boy, play. My mother plays. And I play too. So disgraced a part that whose issue will hiss me to my grave. And, and contempt and clamor will be mine now. Go play, boy, play. There have been, or I am much deceived. Cook holds air now. And like many a man, there is, even at this present now, while I speak this, Holds his wife by the arm that little thinks she has been sluiced in his absence or, or his pond fished by, by his next neighbor, by, by his smile, his neighbor. <laughs> no, it's comfort, isn't it? <laughs> what other men have gates? Those gates opened as mine, against their will. Should all despair that have revolted wives. The tenth of mankind would hang themselves. Okay, this is great. Um, can you just do the, do, just quickly, can we just do that part again from the, uh, after the last time you send the boy off? Yeah. Um, and uh, d I, that that gets real exciting to me when you're when you were really getting in and and, and mm. d d don't do any pauses in between the thing. Let the thoughts happen too faster. Okay. Cool. Great. New ideas and um, and your friend also is trying to calm you down. Okay? Cool. Okay. Your friend is trying to be reasonable with you. Okay, and chill mm. you out. And you have a very good argument to make. Cool, okay. great. Just go for that. Go for the, go from the uh, last sending the boy off. Go play, boy, play. There have been, or I am much deceived. Cuckold's air now, and many a man there is that uh, even at this present. Now, whilst I speak this, holds his wife by the arm, and little thinks she has been sluiced in his absence. And, and his pond, fished by his next neighbor, by Sir Smile, his neighbor. They, there's comfort in it. Whilst other men have gates, and those gates opened as mine against my will. <laughs> she should all despair that, that I have revolted wives. The tent of mankind would hang themselves. Physic for it, there's none. It is a bird planet. The world will strike where it is predominant and, and is powerful. Think it from east, west, north, and south. Be it concluded, no, Barricado, for a belly. Know it. 
it will let in and out the enemy with bag and baggage. Many thousands of us have the disease and feel it not. Oh no, boy. I think that's the, I think that's the, that's exact, that's the good direction. And you were letting the language work on you in a nice way. Mm. And you were also on top of the emotion in a way, which I, th I mean, you were wrestling with it in a, in a good frustrated way. So I think that's, mm. I think that's like, I think that's the thing with the soliloquies and the, is you, is again, the, I mean, for me, uh, is still pursuing an intention, figuring yeah. out how to prosecute your case. I mean, I think there is such a, uh, whether it's against yourself, your soul, your friend, the audience, whatever, they don't believe that the audience is the Greek chorus or, I, you know, w whatever it is, uh, I think, um, that's I think that's my two cents on on those, but that was yeah. I thought that was really good progress. The, I think that was really like the the thing. No, it's that was uh, great. Uh, it is a, it is Sorry, a tough Paul. one, Hamish. Like you said, just finding like what's it's yeah. When it's in a scene one on one, it's always easier I think to find the like you're the person and you're going at them. Sometimes I think with the soliloquies it can be a little ethereal, or you can come up. I find sometimes I come up with things that it feels like it's not quite right, but it's it's something. But what you kind of got at, I really like that idea that almost like you've got an, the idea of the arguing friend, I think was really, that really felt, um, yeah, active and, and cool. It was good to play off. Yeah. And I think there's also like, a, uh, especially with, with Leonti, I mean, there's like a sort of, people are telling him to chill. I mean, like mm. he is telling himself to chill. There's like a, there's like a moral universe that uh, is there and they're aware of. You know, so that's why you gotta break out and say this doesn't make sense. You know, mm. yeah. yeah, right. That was great. Cool. Great, Thanks. great Thanks stuff. So I just want to piggyback really quickly on that, Paul. Paul, do you have the text in front of you? Uh, I do. Yeah. Can you do me a favor? Just one yeah. more thing on top of everything Hamish just said about sourcing it and finding someone and the argument and yeah. stuff is. Can you do me a real favor? Because I sometimes it's not the case. It's really weird when I when I work on things. I I just get I get this weird. Uh, uh, photographic memory where I can actually see my verse lines and stuff. So <laughs> I use that to check back when I feel I'm not, uh, when I lose myself, sometimes in rehearsal or performance, I come mm. back to that visual of the verse line to get back on track with argument. Do me a real big favor with all the feeling and intensity you had. Can you just from um, that line and his pawn fished by his neighbor, can you just read the lines taking no breaks even when there's a full stop in the middle of the line yeah hit the full stop and go straight on don't take any breaks till the end of the line and then keep going and keep the thoughts going that fast don't okay. break any of the lines up at all with the same intensity but just read it just read okay. them using the verse line just from there to conclude it or something yeah cool great and just and just read it don't bring my eyes up just stay on the text just stay on the text, but just the only time you take a, a break from your thoughts is at the end of the line. Great. And his pond fished by his next neighbor by to smile, his neighbor. Nay, there's comfort in it. Whilst other men have gates and those gates opened as mine against their will, should all despair that have revolted wise, the tenth of mankind would hang themselves. Physic for it, there's none. It is a bawdy planet that will strike where it is predominant and is powerful. Think it from east, west, north, and south. Be it concluded, no barricado for a belly. Know it. It will let in and out the enemy with bag and baggage. Many thousands of us have the disease and feel it not. So I'm sure I'm, I'm running past the end line thoughts too. Yeah, it's really hard. Do it one more time, but really hit the end of the line. Don't think hit of the, the sense. Hit, hit the end of the line. Take a, and then start the next line, and then Great. start the next line. Don't run any of the lines. Great, cool, cool. Try it one more time. And his pond fished by his next neighbor by Sir Smile, his neighbor. 
made us confident. Whilst other men have gates and those gates opened as mine against their will, should all despair that have revolted wives, the tent of mankind would hang themselves. Physic for it, there's none. It is a body planet that will strike where it is predominant and it is powerful, think it. From east, west, north and south, be it concluded. No barricado for a belly, know it. It will in, in and out the enemy with bag and baggage, many thousands of us of the disease and feel it not. How now, boy? What did you think of that? Yeah, it's, uh, it was just the, the thoughts. I just gave myself just that nanosecond to find the next thought. And, and I, I could hear, the, I could understand the thoughts. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And it's, that's without having to act crazy. Like even that last line, have the disease and feel it. How now, boy? It's that, that mind is going back and forth. Yeah, yeah. If you start breaking it up, it's harder for us to put. You were reading it, but that was in itself mad man. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> in, in listening. So on top of everything we've been talking about, really trust the structure. Because mm. especially when you see those things, like why is the line stopping here weirdly? It's, it's funny that Hamish, that this happened because the other great speech that does this is Hermione's speech in this, mm. where if you go logically, you think, oh yeah, I'm making the sense of it, running the lines, but everything, the emotion and the, and the state of the person becomes clearer for us if you trust the verse line, you know? Mm. Um, yeah. So I hope that helped. That's another thing to throw into your mix on working on this. Mm. Sorry we've gone over, but this, this play just no. excites me all the time. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> No, no, I agree. So I mean, good. especially I don't know if this is right, Chuck Rudy, but the I think the especially the later ones and when the people are going crazy, it's Shakespeare, man. It's hard yeah. to follow. So yeah, yeah just letting the <clears throat> letting those line endings, certainly when you're starting out doing the work for you, you know, then you don't have to <clears throat> play the crazy. It's right there. Yeah, yeah, you don't. That's exactly a great way. So you don't have to play the crazy. <laughs> And then you can break the rules and bend them as you need it, as you get comfortable. But it just really keeps you and allows us to, to know what you're saying mm -hmm. and understand what you're saying. So great work, mate. Great, great. work. Thank cool. you. Thanks Alexandra. Thanks. Hey, good morning. Hi. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Good. What, what are you, you going to do? Uh, Henry Four Part One. Hal, so act three, scene two. Awesome. Um, uh, and uh, just uh, tell me what's Hal been doing just before he starts saying this stuff? Well, his dad's been <coughs> chastising him for hanging out with Falstaff and the gang and comparing him to Hotspur and sort of wishing that Hotspur was his son. And also just comparing the situation to when he, um, when his father overthrew Bowling, uh, uh, Richard. Okay. Great, take your time whenever you're, whenever you're ready. Okay. Do not think so. You shall not find it so. And God forgive them that so much have swayed your majesty's good thoughts away from me. I will redeem all this on Percy's head, and in the closing of some glorious day be bold to tell you that I am your son, when I will wear a garment all of blood and stain my favors in a bloody mask which washed away shall scour my shame with it. And that shall be the day when e'er it lights that the same child of honor and renown, this gallant hotspur, this all praised knight, and your unthought of Harry chance to meet. For every honor sitting on his helm, what they were multitudes, and on my head, my shame's redoubled. For the time will come that I shall make this northern youth exchange his glorious deeds for my indignities. Percy is 
but my factor, good my lord, to engross of glorious deeds on my behalf. And I will call him to so strict account that he shall render every glory up, yea, even the slightest worship of his time, or I shall tear the reckoning from his heart. This in the name of God, I promise here, the which if, if he be pleased, I shall perform. I do beseech your majesty may salve the long grown wounds of my intemperance. If not, the end of life cancels all bans and I will die a hundred thousand deaths ere break the smallest parcel of this vow. That's awesome. That's such a rock star speech. <clears throat> I did it once. I love it. That's great. <laughs> I do too. It's my favorite Shakespeare. Oh, good. Cool. And uh, where, where are you from? Um, I'm from Arizona, which is where I'm sheltering right now. But oh, uh, I live in New York. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. And uh, you, you, do, you, do you have parents? Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, great. I mean, I found that very clear and those are very like, I think uh, it's a really long, interesting, uh, speech. Um, you know, I, I don't have like a ton, I don't have a ton for you on it. I would just say, um, uh for maybe for you 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 clearly know how to make those arguments and do those th do that thing and um i would just say for yourself maybe to uh be i don't want to say angrier but um try maybe trying it with like um sorry this is taking me a second to untangle my thoughts about it um I would say, I mean, we've been talking about making it, uh, I've been talking a lot about making the arguments and I felt like you made, you make those arguments quite well and you know mm -hmm. how to do that. Um, now I would say, uh, be a little bit more, uh, why don't you try it? Just try it as a little bit more of a teenager and uh, try it a little bit more as like, this is the stuff dad talks, tells stories all the time yeah. about when he was really covered in blood and how awesome. <laughs> and uh, he ta he's always talking about all the people that he killed and all the, and so it's not just, it's not just Percy, but it's him. I mean, yeah. these are all like his things, you know? And mm -hmm. I don't know if your parents, uh, always loved you so much. Mine certainly did, but um, uh, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, just like try to like say like every single positive thing that you're saying. This is what Dad has been, and Dad's wanted you to die. You know, mm. young, in the field, doing what he did. And that's a horrible thing for a parent to want for their child. Yeah. I mean, like what kind of fucking shit is this? Uh, I'm overloading this right now, but just like have fun saying like, hey, you know, it's a little breakfast club. I get, okay. Go for I get this. <laughs> it's been interesting sheltering with my parents. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I understand this fully. <laughs> yeah, just try it. That might be fun. And uh, okay. yeah. And find, uh, yeah, and you can, you know how to do your, your, your verse stuff. So find words that surprise you that you like to spit at him. Go for Great. it. Go. Okay. Do not think so. You shall not find it so, and, and God forgive them that so much have swayed your majesty's good thoughts away from me. I will redeem all this on Percy's head, and in the closing of some glorious day, be bold to tell you that I am your son. 
when I will wear a garment all of blood and stain my favors in a bloody mask, which washed away shall scour my shame with it. Ooh. That's okay. That's great. It, you, it's great. It's great. That's great. Don't do, be wary of having any voice quaver. Make your point. Don't worry about the emotion. Just make your point. Yeah, okay. Go, go again. Alexander, remember uh, Hamish's thing, remember breath. But what was, how did you phrase it? The lungs are a lot more intelligent than the brain. And I, okay. one place just to think of that is before you say, I will redeem, you know, this is the whole point. You know what I mean? These, right. The speech starts as a real teenager. Okay, yeah. those fuckers that have been telling you stuff about me, they're all wrong. And then this is the point. Remember, yeah. your lungs need to be part of this, okay? Yeah? Yep. Okay. Yep. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Do not think so. You shall not find it so. And God forgive them that so much have swayed your majesty's good thoughts away from me. I will redeem all this on Percy's head. And in the closing of some glorious day, be bold to tell you that I am your son. When I will wear a garment all of blood and stain my favors in a bloody mask, which washed away shall scour my shame with it. And that shall be the day when, when e'er it lights that the same child of honor and renown, this gallant hotspur, this all praised knight, and your unthought of Harry chance to meet. Okay, so that's great. Now just do it again. Do it, start, start it like, start like this is the peak of the speech. Just start, don't shape the speech well. It's not the beginning of the speech. Start at the top of the crescendo. The very first lines you have, Yeah. stop him from talking. Stop him from talking. I don't know how close your parents are in the house right now, but stop them from talking. Start and really scare yourself as an actor because the speech is long. It's got a lot of stuff to do. Yeah. But just start at the top of the crescendo and go for and go from. Dude, stop me from talking. I'm telling you that you're disappointing. Blah 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 blah. Stop me. Stop me. Stop me. Do not stop me. think so. You shall not find it so. And God forgive them that so much have swayed your majesty's good thoughts away from me. I will redeem all this on Percy's head. And in the closing of some glorious day, be bold to tell you that I am your son. When I will wear a garment all of blood and stain my favors in a bloody mask, which washed away shall scour my shame with it. And that shall be the day when e'er it lights that the same child of honor and renown, this gallant hotspur, this all praised knight, and your unthought of Harry chance to meet. For every honor sitting on his elm, would they were multitudes. And on my head, my shame's redoubled, for the time will come that I shall make this northern youth exchange his glorious deeds for my indignities. Percy is but my factor, good my lord, to engross up glorious deeds on my behalf. And I shall call him to so strict account that he shall render every glory up, yea, even the slightest worship of his time, or I shall tear the reckoning from his heart. This, in the name of God, I promise here, the which, if he be pleased, I shall perform. I do beseech your majesty may salve the long grown wounds of my intemperance. If not, the end of life cancels all bands and I will die a hundred thousand deaths and break the smallest parcel of this vow. Great, great. Yeah, and I just think the uh, I would, I think that's great. And I, I think you, it, it's just like, I think it's a, it, you know, this is an earlier play, so the verse is easier. 
mm -hmm. and and the emotion and and it's just I, you know we know we know this guy yeah so uh uh so you can screw around but don't beseech the word beseech in that speech is uh is a lie he's not beseeching he is fucking telling his dad yeah he's gonna kill this fucker so many fucking times <laughs> okay over and uh and that he's um that he has raised a monster yeah i mean uh yeah but but i think that's i think that's good and i think it's good with the speech like that to um i mean to it gets scary i mean it's like it just it gets scary and and you you got to figure out that it's okay to you know run out of breath get a little lightheaded with the rage of it but i think you know he sort of made his point halfway through the speech yeah and he's go he's gonna keep going keep throwing these things in um but i i i think that's a really great that's a, a good attack and it's also it's like a good speech because you can make nice music out of it yeah. you can you can shape it in a nice way but then there's also like a messy music that you can make with it and it's easier to do with these earlier plays where the verses uh, and the language is a little bit simpler is that right okay i said so so it is <laughs> no it's so clear with what you say that because the structure is so there in his early writing that when you choose to mess around and i don't i don't know go for my own victim trick if you want it can really be you can really deliberately say i'm doing this on purpose you know um so yeah no that i agree and starting it with that attack hamish said always remember guys is that <laughs> You can't assume people are just going to stand there and let yeah, let you speak, you know, yeah. and keep speaking and keep speaking. Especially since he's talking to a father that hasn't really given him the time of the day, except for when expressing disappointment to him. So this is the moment where I'm going to speak. I mean, no, you're not. I mean, there's no reason to assume Henry the Fourth is just sitting there going, "Okay, give it." He, who the? You know what I mean? You have to. Uh, sorry, yeah. Hamish, you were going to join in there. I don't. You know, you have to make him freaking listen for the first time in your life you're gonna listen to me. You know what I mean? And I think it's really important that it isn't about, and, and I, I, it's, it's just extraordinary, the lines, the, the regularity of the lines, it's almost yeah. like an army marching to this, whatever, and that's the music you gotta find. I don't know, Hamish, you were, it looked no, like you were about to say good. something. No, that's yeah. good, that's great. Mm -hmm. Excellent, lovely work, Alexander. Okay. Thank you so much. Right, Mer. Hey. Hi. How are you guys? Real good. How are you? Do you, can, do you feel the butterflies building as the session? Oh, goes? absolutely. Absolutely. What, what are you going to be doing? Um, I'm going to do uh, Imogen. I'm going to hazard the speech from uh, Act 3, Scene 4. Um, OK, great. Where, where are you from? Um, I'm, I live in New York. Uh, I'm currently in Vancouver. Oh, really? Yeah. I was, uh, I was in Vancouver just when this all started and it was, uh, it was like one day I was like, oh, Canada is so nice. And then I was like, well, Canada does not want me here. Uh, oh. Yeah. Wait, but you also, it's I need to go back. I love Vancouver. It's beautiful. God. It's um, Act Three. Was, um, Act Three, Scene Four, um, Line. I think. What? Oh, okay, I got it. Forty-six is where I'm starting. Oh God, I'm really here for this. Um, okay, in your own time. I false, thy conscience witness, the Akamo. Thou didst accuse him of incontinency, thou then lookst like a villain, now methinks thy favor is good enough. Some Jay of Italy, whose mother was her painting, hath betrayed him. Poor I am stale, a garment out of fashion. And for I am richer than to be hung from the walls, I must be ripped to pieces with me. 
Oh, men's vows are women's traitors, all good seeming. By thy revolt, O husband, shall be thought to put on for villainy, not born where it grows, but worn a bait for ladies. True, honest men, being heard like false Aeneas, were in their time thought false, and silence weeping did scandal many a holy tear. Thus thou, posthumous, thou will lay the leaven on all proper men, goodly and gallant shall be false and perjured from thy great fail. Come now, fellow. Be thou honest, do thy master's bidding, and when thou seest him, a little witness my obedience. Great. That's great. I'm sorry, I'm just finding my, I'm finding, finding the, because she's just read the thing, right? Right. She's just read the, uh, terrific. Um, I would say that's great. Just go, just uh, do it again. Go slower. Go a little bit slower and do, do the, do the, Do the line endings, take your breaths. Just to explain it to me a little bit more. Um, try that, just try that. Just try to explain to me why this is a bad letter. This is a, ba this is a bad note, by the way, that I'm giving you, but just try that. Sorry, it's all good, okay. Um. I false, thy conscience witness, Iacomo, thou didst accuse him of incontinency, thou then lookst like a villain, now methinks thy favor is good enough. Some jay of Italy, whose mother was her painting, had betrayed him, poor I am stale, a garment out of fashion, and, and for I'm richer than to be hung from the walls, I must be ripped to pieces with me. Oh, men's vows are women's traitors, all good seeming. By thy revolt, O husband, shall be thought put on for villainy, not born where it grows, but worn a bait for ladies. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, so, uh, God, I wish I could find this. I'm staring at the scene right now, and I can't find the thing. Um, just the, uh, do the Yakimo bit. Just do the Yakimo bit. Finish it, do the next bit, finish it, do the next bit, finish it. But really take, do this, because there's like one thing and then another and then another, right? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, just don't, 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 don't hustle. Like, uh, pretend like you've got the letter there. Give me one, you've read a sentence. Do the Yakima thing. Go down, read another sentence. Do, do the, you know, does that make sense? Because you've got the letter right there, right? Okay, yeah. I think it's around line 40 or so, 39 or 40 or something, Hamish. Okay. If that helps. No, my thing is not lying. So. Okay, yeah, go ahead. I just want to listen, see if I... I false. I conscience witness. Yakimo, thou didst accuse him of incontinency thou then looks like a villain now methinks thy favor is good enough some jay of italy whose mother was her painting hath betrayed him for i am stale a garment out of fashion and for i am richer than to be hung from the walls i i must be ripped to pieces with me oh men's vows are women's traitors all good seeming by thy revolt, O husband, shall be, shall be thought put on for villainy, not born where it grows, but born a bait for ladies. True, honest men, being heard like false Aeneas, were in their time thought false, and Sinon's weeping did scandal many a holy tear. Thus thou, posthumous, wilt lay the leaven on all proper men. Goodly and gallant shall be false and perjured from thy great fail. Come now, fellow, do thy master's bidding. 
and when thou seest him, a little witness my obedience. Yeah, I think you want to just like, it's a very tricky, this is, I find this to be a, a tricky, this is a tricky speech. Because, yeah, it is all these like half lines. Uh, I mean, broke, the periods are coming in the middle of the things. And so I see you going ahead. Um, uh, for the sake of this, just do the part, poor, poor. Uh, just go from some J of Italy. Can you just do that? Yeah. Um... Some jay of Italy, whose mother was her painting, had betrayed him. Poor I am stale, a garment out of fashion, and for I'm richer than to be hung from the walls, I must be ripped to pieces with me. Yeah, just do that again. Uh, and just, I, I want to see, this is, just paint those pictures here. Uh, just do each one of these little things, picture them. Like, cause I think she really is like drowning. I mean, like trying to, so do, don't do the longer thing. Do the smaller ones, do the, what does a J of Italy look like? What does a J of Italy look like whose mother was a painting? Uh, just like, Float these little things. Just float them up like bubbles. Okay. Just float. Don't don't do the whole lines. Don't. Do, I mean, don't worry about getting all the way. Do like a lot of do 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 the opposite of what we've been talking about, and really just like breathe breathe on each one of these commas here, and each one of the colons and stuff like that. Let's just go from some J of Italy. Some Jay of Italy, whose mother was her painting, hath betrayed him. Poor. Don't look at me. Also, also, don't look at me. Don't look at okay. me or at the at the camera. Like really, uh, search for, search for like picture a Jay of Italy. Tell me what you, you know. All right. Some Jay of Italy, whose mother was her painting, hath betrayed him. Poor I am stale, a garment out of fashion, and for I am richer than to be hung from the walls, I must be ripped to pieces with me. Oh. Men's vows are women's traitors, all good seeming. By thy revolt, O oh, husband, shall be thought put on for villainy, not Born where it grows, but born a, a bait for ladies. To honest men being heard like false Aeneas were in their time thought false and silence weeping did scandal many a holy tear. Thus thou posthumous wilt lay the leaven on all proper men, goodly and gallant shall be false and perjured from thy great fail. Come now, fellow. Be thou honest to thy master's bidding. And when thou seest him, a little witness my obedience. Cool, cool. I think this is a really difficult, uh, I think this is a very difficult speech. Um, and I think you're taking a really good crack at it. And I do think that there's, uh, it's just because also because you got Aeneas in there and sign on and all of these guys, it's, but these are her ways of trying to make reason, I guess, in this thing. But, um, I would encourage you as you go through, I mean, with this, because it's like, there'll be four words. Some J of Italy, whose mother was her painting, hath betrayed him. That's what makes sense. Mm -hmm. Poor I am stale. I'm a, uh, uh, I'm a garment that's out of fashion. 
and that I, I'm, you know, they're like really, they're sort of, you need to, to put your hand on each one of these rocks, each one of these images, if you're gonna get out of this well that you've fallen down by doing this. And if you go to too, do put too many of them together and I don't feel like you know about Sinon or know about Aeneas or know what that J of Italy looks like or what it means that her mother, then your hand is slipping off the rock and you're back down the well again. Mm. But I think you're, what she's doing is she's finding her way up to the top of the well. Oh, this is what makes sense. Please kill me. Mm. You know, please kill me now. But you've got to be really, have a firm grasp on these different rocks as you're going up. Um, because it because she's mad with the grief, you know, it's really, and that's what these characters so often, so often are. Um, but yeah, getting those because they got a they're, they're hard, they're hard, they're hard things to uh, for, uh, for us to uh, grasp on, onto, but that's uh, but that's like a really good. She's a wonderful, do you love Imogen? I do, um, but she's not my favorite. And that's one of the reasons why I did this. Um, I, I'm, I'm actually like, I'm really, I love Viola. That's like my character that I love. And I think that they're, they're a little different, um, but I, I don't, I do, I do like Imogen a lot, but I just felt like this, this just kind of threw me way out of my comfort zone to do this. Um, which is why I chose it. Yeah, that's a good move. And yeah. I'll go with what Hamish said, is that one of, uh, one of the things that is vividly alive, I don't know if you were there with um, when his mom, funny enough, right. was on the, I was saying the connection between the imagination, the imagination and the voice is what that, we're, we're trying to fill that synapse, you know? Right. And I think very much the only way you can navigate through this speech is to have a very specific image of everything you talk about, the number of times you say like this, what that, you know what I mean? If you're seeing it and you have a firm grasp, you don't actually have to play the madness or the weariness. It's by us listening to you jump from image to image, we're hearing someone's mind do that. Does that make sense? Yeah. But it has to be really vivid for you in any speech. Like it, it seems almost like, well, yeah, of course it's vivid, but how vivid is it? You know, really Absolutely. seeing like to a thing that does the this that does the Shakespeare does that all the time and when you see it you know just by navigating through explaining the image we follow you and we also know the state of mind you're in without you having to play it does that make sense hmm. yeah so really hold on that's a great image I'm going to steal that Hamish of getting out of a well when you have all these images to so really have a solid idea of that one and that one and that one yeah it's a that rich image. It's a rich image. You've you've it, robbed yeah. my you've robbed my score. <laughs> going off. Right All right, thank you, Ma. Um, Colby, <laughs> nice. nice work, Ma. Colby. Hey, 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 Colby. How are you? Hey, how's it going? How are you? Great. What are you gonna do? I am doing uh, Sam Cooke from a play called One Night in Miami. This is a contemporary piece about uh, the imagined night after uh, Cassius Clay wins the world title in 64. Um, he actually meets up with good friends of his at the time, which are Malcolm X, Muhammad Ali, and Jim Brown. So uh, the circumstances are they're basically kind of arguing there points about the best way to empower African Americans in the time in 64. And uh, basically at this, at this point, he's been kind of accused of being a sellout because as Bob Dylan is writing, Blowing in the Wind, and those songs are kind of becoming the protest anthems, he's still singing, you know, I love you, I love you, you know, that kind uh -huh. of. And so this is essentially his argument um, in response to Malcolm about freedom. Great. Cool, cool. 
Sorry. <laughs> You don't think I know about this English invasion? I'm one step ahead of all those English boys. Listen, I've got these protégés, the Valentinos. It's these five brothers. The youngest one, Bobby, wrote this song. It's all over now. Great tune. Uh, the band records it, and it's fantastic. All over the R&B charts. Well, then one of these bands from England contacts me and wants to record a cover of the song. They call themselves the Rolling Stones. Now, Bobby and his brothers are like, no damn way, that's our song. But I've got the final say so, and I'm looking at the big picture. I give the Rolling Stones permission to record it, and it becomes the number one song on the pop charts. Not on the R&B charts, but the pop charts. But of course, when this version of the song gets big, Bobby's version is history. It drops off the R&B charts, it's just gone. Meanwhile, the Rolling Stones have their first number one hit and are being compared to the Beatles. So of course, Bobby's crushed. He's crushed for about six months because six months later, that first royalty check comes in. Because Bobby's the writer and my company owns the rights to the song, that means every time some white girl goes out and buys a copy of the single, they're putting money into our pockets. Next thing you know, Bobby's like, you think the Rolling Stones won't record any more of my song? <laughs> you tell me, how is that not empowerment? Those white boys are out there touring and they don't even know they're working for us. Everybody out here talks about how they want a piece of the pie. Well, I don't. I want the damn recipe. Cool. Well, that's great. I mean, that's how you do it. So that's... <laughs> That's, uh, I mean, yeah, uh, what, what do you, uh, what do you want to do different? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I, I know, I would have no idea. Um, it, it's, it's, it's one of those pieces where, you know, like, obviously, like, I'm, with as much respect as I have for the bottom, you know, I'm looking at, you know, that kind of speed of thought when it comes to those contemporary pieces and that in that kind of TV film world and you know because for me it's I, I always whenever I'm whenever I'm in those spaces I always you know I get I, I, I always feel like I'm I get stopped or you know for instance when if you were to break it up you know I start to lose you know I start to lose it in some ways and so I, I think that's I mean if anything it's just trying to find the flexibility within the speed of thought. Yeah, I'd like to try something on Hamish, if I can jump in with Kobe, because I agree with you, he's done such a great job with it already. I, I saw a pr production of this, it's an amazing thing. I just wonder, Kobe, since you're there, saying you're looking for stuff uh -huh. to add to your arsenal, you know, is to really take into account the amount of pressure Sam Cook was under at mm -hmm. this time, of the room he's in. I mean, these guys yeah. are yeah, yeah, ex yeah, yeah. Ali. These guys, no one is questioning who they are. Yeah. But everyone is questioning you. So that version that you gave was wonderfully confident. And the argument was there. If it was Shakespeare, I'd be like, okay, I get exactly what this guy's saying. But, and also, you're, I think you lead with strong alpha male. It's your go-to thing. That's your lead as an actor. But I, it'd be really interesting. What I would be looking for if you were doing that piece for me is that, oh, geez, he's nailed it. Whatever, I can see it. I can't wait for him to break into I Was Born. You know what I mean? I'm just right, waiting right, to right. hear that. Break into it, sing for him. Well, <laughs> what if the whole thing is that you're in a room with guys who no one at this point is questioning their status as leaders of African-American people right. and everyone else in that room, in your head and outside is questioning yours. So I guess it's a desperation. Why do you have to tell this bloody story? You know what I mean? Right. So can you try opening that valve yeah. of vulnerability and insecurity? Yeah. With the same speed of thought. I don't want to see you, well, but with the same speed of thought, but open that valve because at the end of the day, we always ask ourselves, never treat anything like a speech. It's always, there's a reason you're giving it. And there's a, you know what I mean? So could you add to the mix of your reason, not just, this but 
the fact that you know you think you know what they're all thinking about you. Do you know what I mean? Right. Just for shits and giggles. Let's and see that I, version. And can I Go add on. can I add another ingredient on that? Don't mm -hmm. smile. Just mm -hmm. don't smile. Make him somebody who, this is also not how you would do it, but just make him someone who is not confident in being charming or is just like, don't, it's too much smiling. Gotcha. Absolutely. You don't think I know about this English invasion? I'm one step ahead of all those English boys. Listen, I've got these protégés, the Valentinos. It's these five brothers. The youngest one, Bobby, wrote this song. It's all over now. Great tune. The band records it, and it's fantastic all over the R&B charts. Well, then one of these bands from England contacts me and wants to record a cover of the song. They call themselves the Rolling Stones. Now, Bobby and his brothers are like, no damn way, that's our song. But I've got the final say so, and I'm looking at the big picture. I give the Rolling Stones permission to record it, and it becomes the number one song on the pop charts. Not only R&B charts, but the pop charts. But of course, when this version of the song gets big, Bobby's version is history. It drops off the R&B charts, it's just gone. Okay, uh, time out, time out. Just to, uh, I think you're, you're doing great. Just to, to put, I, I'm, maybe this is counter to what Chukwu was just saying, but uh, put, a, put a timer on it. You've got to, just do it faster. Just do it, do it, just do it like, look, you got three minutes. I feel like you've, I feel like you've finished making your argument when you said the Rolling Stones, okay? We all know who the Rolling Stones are, okay? <laughs> right, the, that's completely. That the, the point of what you're making, the point that you're trying to make is the thing at the end of the thing, which is that th that's currency. So do we get to get to you know we're you got the the clock is ticking. This is your moment to make your make your point. Kobe, those big guns in the room are one second away from turning their backs on you again. Right. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. keep them. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Right. You don't think I know about this English invasion? I'm one step ahead of all those English boys. Listen, I've got these protégés, the Valentinos. It's these five brothers. The youngest one, Bobby, wrote this song. It's all over now, great tune. It, they, the band records it and it's fantastic, all over the R&B charts. Well, then one of these bands from England contacts me and wants to record a cover of the song. They call themselves the Rolling Stones. Now Bobby and his brothers are like, no damn way, that's our song. But I've got the final say so, and I'm looking at the big picture. I give the Rolling Stones permission to record it, and it becomes the number one song on the pop charts. Not on the R&B charts, but the pop charts. But of course, when this version of the song gets big, Bobby's version is history. It falls off the, the, the R&B charts, it's just gone. Meanwhile, the Rolling Stones have their first number one hit and are being compared to the Beatles. So of course, Bobby's crushed. He's crushed for about, six months, because six months later, that first royalty check comes in. And because Bobby's the writer and my company owns the rights to the song, that means every time some white girl goes out there and buys a copy of that single, they're putting money into our pockets. Next thing you know, Bobby's like, you think the Rolling Stones want to record any more of my songs? <laughs> you tell me, how is that not empowerment? Those white boys are out there touring and they don't even know they're working for us. Everybody out here talks about how they want a piece of the pie. Well, I don't. I want the damn recipe. Great. Good. Yeah. <laughs> also, he knows the point that he is the the point that he is getting to, and it's empowerment, and you're getting to that. So yeah. that's uh, I mean that that's how music on that was great. Thank yeah, you. that was great. That end was really strong. Beautiful. Appreciate Thank you. It. Thank you. <laughs> All right, uh, Sophia. 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 Sophia, hi. Hey, Sophia. <laughs> hi. Um, what's up, guys? <laughs> you know, wait, wait one second. I just heard some noise out there and I just saw a chatter. Hello? One second, Sophia. Yeah, sure. Hey, Chuck. Yes. 
We, you probably don't remember me. We've actually met before. Really? Um, I'm yeah. Terrible. We, it's getting no, old. Um, we did a reading at the Pearl of Ubu Roy. Oh. Oh my God. Yeah. Right. Quite a. I had like long curly hair too. So oh. Really <laughs> that was so much fun. Oh, lovely yeah. to see you again. You know. Oh, uh, yeah, Lily, I remember that. Lily's gonna come. Lily's gonna come in. Uh, now. Oh. The, You're tag teaming. Uh, we're, All right. Uh, <laughs> um, she she just uh, uh, let's just uh, 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 what what we, what are you going to be doing? <laughs> I'm gonna do Amelia. What? I'm going to do Amelia from Othello. Oh my gosh, that's a real. <laughs> uh, now he wants to stay. <laughs> <laughs> let me see. Let me see if, uh, if I have to like be coached by both you and Lily. Yeah, and I saw that chat saying, like, is, is Lily going to be up here? And, uh, and then I just heard her. So um, I think you should get the bang for your buck. Uh, what scene, what act in the scene is it? Sorry. Um, I believe it's act four, scene three. Um, great. Lil, are you coming? May take a minute. Yeah. Sure. Um, you go ahead. Why don't you do it unless you wanna unless you Sure, yeah, let's do it. Go for it. But I do think it is their husband's fault. If wives do fall, say that they slack their duties and pour our treasures into foreign laps or else break out in peevish jealousy and restraint upon us or say they strike us or scant our former having in despite. Why we have galls and though we have some grace yet have we some revenge, let husbands know their wives have sense like them. They see and smell and have their palates both for sweet and sour as husbands have. What is it that they do when they change us for others? Is it sport? I think it is. And doth affection breed it? I think it doth. Is frailty that thus errs. <laughs> it is so too. And have not we affections, desires for sport and frailty men have? <laughs> then let them use us well. Let's let them know the ills we do, their ills instruct us so. Oh, that was great. Lil, come here. Oh, she's coming. Um, she's running back and forth. Well, you'll do it all over again. That was, I think, <laughs> uh, I think that's really terrific. It, uh, do you imagine that Desdem, what's their uh, sort of like, what's their backstory, by the way? What do you imagine? Um, yeah, it's a good question. I mean, it can go many ways, right? Um, a wonderful I, I imagine that, oh, hi. Um, I imagine that at this point in the play, Amelia really sees her as, you know, the, the friendship and the uh, camaraderie between them is, is more at the forefront than, than the jealousy that I think is also probably a part of their relationship. And she's in Desmond is in a real desperate spot right now, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, can, can you just like how you're talking to us right now, mm -hmm. you know, where you're just sort of explaining the relationship between the two of them? Can you do? Can you explain? Can you do the speech again, just like you're explain like you're explaining what men are like to Lily? Yeah. But I do think it is their husband's fault if wives do fall. Say that they slack their duties 
and pour our treasures into foreign laps, or else break out in peevish jealousies, throwing restraint upon us. Or so they strike us, or scant our former having in despite. Why, we have galls, and though we have some grace, yet have we some revenge. Let husbands know, their wives have sense like them. They see and smell and have their palates both for sweet and sour as husbands have. What is it that they do when they change us for others? Is it sport? I think it is. And does affection breed it? I think it doth. Is frailty that thus errs? It is so too. And have not we affections desires for sport and frailty as husbands have, then let them use us well. Just let them know the ills we do. Their ills instruct us so. Oh, so great. <laughs> <laughs> Thrown into the deep end, Lily. <laughs> <laughs> So great. I'm, yeah, I'm so sorry. That was, that was the, the only, it's like perfect. I mean, it's so wonderful. The only thing I would say is to make sure you seem, uh, your intelligence is very apparent just as like a being. Um, and I would say make, and she's also so smart. She is. But just make sure that you like are really asking me and really ask those questions even if you yourself like even if she kind of has the sense of the answer mm -hmm. still in the moment ask the question both for me and for you yeah and then find the the answer i would say is the only thing because she's like so shrewd um but yeah just to take just to have that be um like new every time and yeah I've actually always struggled with that in this speech because it's like it seems the questions the answers to the questions seem so intrinsic to her argument the argument that she's making from the beginning of the speech that I've always struggled with like really asking them and yeah. and then make it more about me like <clears throat> make sure that I'm also with you asking the question yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. I mean, not me, but her. Yeah. Me and mama. <clears throat> Do you disagree with my note? I love your note. <laughs> that was so much better. My note was like, well, maybe she's think maybe she's giving such good. If she's used to giving Desdemona good advice, and for a second, it becomes about Iago. For a second, uh, mm -hmm. but I. I think it can go back and forth. I think your your point is really, I, it's, yeah, because it's such a well-made argument. That's the, right. that's, the that's the tr trouble. the trap of it, mm -hmm. is it's so beautiful and well. I think that to, what both of you are saying, strangely enough, actually can coincide, can actually work very well together because a lot of the times the notes I give when, actors do this speech is that they get so caught up in playing Amelia they forget they're there to actually make Desdemona feel good and Sophia you don't suffer from that I'm really glad to say that you're actually there for her which is a great step but the note about Iago and I think what will make you both ask Desdemona the question like Lily suggesting and also bring Iago into it like Hamish is, is that when you ask those questions you're asking her because you need her to clarify it for you also because you're mm. in this messed up marriage. Yeah. So that's the immediacy of the questioning. And that's what stops you from having the answer. You ask it and then you come to an answer. And the more you personalize it at the same time as you're asking her that, because you need help too, yeah. will yeah. stop it from being an, a, a well-rounded argument. Does that make sense? Yes, totally. Great, okay. Really using so the, the, mirror, the opportunity of the mirror of the other person in the scene to whether you know no matter how much she is on the track that she's on there's still like that flicker of 
the thing that you'll get from the actress who's playing the part and to have that to like digest that in that in that little moment of suspension between the question and the answer without slowing down too much <laughs> you don't have to worry about that You're so especially because the question you know the way that it's broken up is um yeah i don't want to like break up the the verse too much but it's like there is that discovery um yeah, so great. Thank you so much. That's a great, I love that part. I love that. Go for it. Go for it. Let's let let's see you do it. Do it again. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, but I do think it is their husband's fault if wives do fall. Say that they slack their duties and pour our treasures into foreign laps, or else break out and throwing restraint upon us, or say they strike us, or scant our former having in despite, why we have galls. And though we have some grace, yet have we some revenge, let husbands know. Their wives have sense like them. They see and smell, and have their palates both for sweet and sour, as husbands have. What is it though, when they change us for others? Is it sport? I think it is. And doth affection breed it? I think it doth. Is it frailty that thus errs? It is so too. And have not we affections, desires for sport and frailty as men have? But let them use us well. Else let them know the ills we do, their ills instruct us so. So great. Thank that was you. so good. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much, guys. So Welcome. Good. Thank you so much, Sophia. Oh, <laughs> all right. So, uh, first of all, officially, welcome, Lily. It's oh great my gosh. to have you. I'm so sorry. I know. We had such oh. a night. Anyway. <laughs> Thank you for being making it possible at all. So, finally, uh, the final person is uh, Finn. Hello. Hi. Are you can you hear me and see me all right? Yeah. Hi, Chuck, Lily. Hi. Hi. Hey. Um, I'll be doing uh, Edmund from King Lear. Terrific. Yeah. Um, down nature, not um, excellent foppery. Thou, nature, art my goddess, to thy laws my services are bound. Wherefore should I stand in the plague of custom and permit the curiosity of nations to deprive me for that I am some 14, for that I am some 12 or 14 moonshines lag of a brother? Why bastard? Wherefore base, when my dimensions are as well compact and my mind is generous and my shape as true as honest madam's issue. Why do they brand us with base, with baseness, bastardry, base, base, who in the lusty stealth of nature take more composition and fierce quality than doth within a dull, stale and tired bed go to the creating a whole tribe of fox gotten between sleep and awake. Well then, legitimate Edgar, I must have your land. Our father's love is to the bastard Edmund as to the legitimate. Fine word, legitimate. Well, my legitimate, if this letter speed and my invention thrive, the base 
Edmund shall talk the legitimate. I grow, I prosper. Now God stand up for bastards. That's great. So great. That's such a good speech. What do you want to say? Read the first. Uh, I, I mean, I would just say, like, uh, you, you have a very nice, a very good quality for that speech. So yeah, I was, um, say the same thing. I was uh, just thinking yeah. that there, and there's such a, a rolling music to it, which seems like it belongs in your body in a nice way. And I think you probably felt there were a couple times where you have where the music. Mom, you can't FaceTime me in the middle of the <laughs> That's okay, you can join in too. Get on. It's like, come on. Um, uh, uh, but I would just say like, uh, I mean, what I think would probably be cute, might be fun to do is just to let yourself be, put, put some constraints on it, be a little bit more, I don't know, what do you think? Yeah, I was gonna say, I was just so immediately, if this seem, if this is a very, this is a great part for you because you have so many of the things um, just naturally, uh, those sort of like opposing qualities seem to come to you very naturally. And I would trust that. Gotcha. Um, and sort of just like let the, I don't know, I almost just wanna make you do it again on like with thinking about um, just trusting that you have everything that you need uh, for, for, for him and for us to feel all the things that we're meant to feel about him. Yeah. And then, yeah, just like do like- Like what if he thought he was like more, wanted to be more of a lawyer or like his brother was more of a lawyer or more of a thing, like put that on. Like, like, try to process, try to talk smart, maybe, you know, okay. like, be the... Well, that's right, that's great. As yeah. in, like, a formality to it or something? But not through, the, not through the whole thing. But okay. just try, like, you, you have a very good argument to make here yeah. about your legitimacy. Gotcha. You know, like, let's, uh, let's, just as sort of like a counter character choice, you know, like, uh, you know, you can, you can really, really like intelligently make your argument, uh, for why you should have this. Gotcha. Um, Finn. Yeah. What does the word wherefore mean? The word wherefore, why? Okay. Why That's I... that what this argument they're talking about. Yeah. Remember you start with why. Why? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's how you're starting. And use that as the launch pad for this legal idea that Hamish and Ali have thrown at you, okay? Just remember, you're starting with why should be, the, you know what I mean? Yeah? yeah I set up my case, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, Chuck. <clears throat> Thou, nature, I my goddess, to thy laws are my services bound. Wherefore should I stand in the plague of custom and permit the curiosity of nations to deprive me? For that I am some 12 or 14 moonshines, lag of a brother? Why bastard? Wherefore base, when my dimensions are as well compact, my mind is generous and my shape as true as honest madam's issue? Why brand they us with base, with baseness, bastardry, base, base, who in the lusty stealth of nature take more composition and fierce quality than doth within a dull, stale, tired bed go to the creating a whole tribe of fox got tween asleep and wake. Well then, Legitimate Edgar, I must have your land. Our father's love is to the bastard Edmund as to the legitimate. <laughs> Fine word, legitimate. Well, my legitimate, if this letter speed 
and my invita and my invention thrive, the base Edmund shall top the legitimate. I grow, I prosper. Now gods, stand up for bastards. Great. What do you, uh, yeah, yeah. Have you played this part? No, never. I have done, um, I do, I audition a lot with, this is the excellent foppery of the world, mm -hmm. but I wanted to, uh, you guys had mentioned in your Q&A, Peter Hall's idea of staying within the form. So I wanted to rebuild something in verse. So I've been working on this this week. I'm so happy Lovely. to have you too. And I think, really great. like, let the, um, because that was so, that had like this kind of great feeling of control mm. to it. And then let those moments, like what I, I must have your land really, you must have his, like that's just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Taking it. Like really be, you know, let yourself be um, just free to, I don't know, like hit the, don't feel confined mm -hmm. by making the argument. Let it still sort of have those moments of, um, I don't want to say like, explosiveness that's not the right i think word. i think it's i think it's partly the whole thing that he's making this speech to nature you're you're not you, right. you've you've decided that the only court worthy of talking to is nature yeah. you know you're like you're my goddess you know <laughs> i'm gonna bow to you yeah. believe this shit you know there's a there's almost an intimacy with nature so find the moments i think with lily saying of where you just go well this is how it's gonna be because you're con you're conversing with nature and really be aware you were good on this in discovering base when you said base, what the fuck? But that repet when Shakespeare gives you repetition, repetition yeah. and stuff, really just find the- <laughs> There's so much repetition. The joy with, with, yeah. with the repetition, you know? It's almost like being on a trampoline and you just keep, you know what I mean? So really found you, even given these sounds, base past the base, but you know what I mean? So yeah. that's the, the bigness I think Lily is talking about. And it comes from the fact that you're doing this you're starting this speech talking to mother nature. She's your lover, you know, in that way. And um, there's, you don't have any walls. You don't have to worry about being overheard. You don't have a ceiling over your head and just have that in mind when, that's, but that's just what, that's just what you just, that's exactly. And, and don't forget the fact of what this is, is your, you're illegitimate, which is why you land on the word that you're illegitimate. Your life has been pretty, they've really, they've made you remember you're a bastard. Yeah. There's a, the, at the beginning of the scene, your dad is joking with, is it Kent or someone who is it? Yeah. He's joking about how he screwed your mom to get you. Yeah. I mean, so don't, with all your charm, and I think Lily said this, you have this, I can see how you will pull the wool over everyone's eyes as Edmund, as a character. But we have to know what's really, yeah. where that thing is, that thing that makes him kill. You know, the yeah. Sense of hurt. He's just like it hurt and yeah. whatever. So yeah. try and find that together with the, you know, those two things. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You've been called dumb your whole life. Base yeah. means dumb. I mean, and I think that's just like, just to yeah, the 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 ba is like that's your best consonant yeah. in in Shakespeare. <laughs> so it's amazing. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Should I do it again? Fuck yeah, do it. Yeah. All right. Here. <clears throat> now, nature art my goddess. To thy laws are my services bound. Sorry, Finn. Can yeah, you yeah. try this instead? Think of nature as, although it's mother nature, think of nature as your lover. His modus right. operandi is seduction, the whole play. So and this is, is the biggest seduction. That you can, is there any way you can stand up? Is yeah. There, just put your hands in your pockets. It doesn't matter. You don't have to have like a great physical thing. But just get out of that chair. It's too. too yeah. 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 Great. You can have your hands in your pockets, whatever. But just, yeah. Go. 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 Thou oh, nature art my goddess. To thy laws are my services bound. Wherefore should I stand in the plague of custom and commit? 
the curiosity of nations to deprive me, for that I am some twelve or fourteen moonshines lag of a brother. Why, bastard? Wherefore, base, when my dimensions are as well compact, my mind as generous, and my shape as true as honest matters issue, why brand they us with base? With baseness, bastardry, base, base, who in the lusty self of nature take more composition and fierce quality than doth. Isn't a dull, stale, and tired bed go to the creator the whole child of fox gods and tween asleep and wake? Well then, legitimate Edgar, I must have your land. Our father's love is to the bastard Edmund as to the legitimate, <laughs> fine word, legitimate. Well, my legitimate, if, if letter speed and my invention thrive, the base Edmund shall top the legitimate. I grow, I prosper. Now God stand up for bastards. Yeah, that's really fun. Great. Hi, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, it's funny how much fun. It's funny how, I mean, Lily and Jamie, she can talk to this. It's like, I wish people weren't always so necessarily serious about in shape. You know, we do these things and we forget that unless it's a comedy, that actually yeah. there's a lot of fun in celebrating witticisms, your own witticisms, your own... I mean, that part of that then is Edmund enjoying the fact that he says, okay, I've been called a legit, well, legit, you know, the, the yeah. fun that can be found even in the darkest moments of the play, you know? Yeah. Um, sorry, Lily, did you have anything to add? No, I thought that was so great. And I'm, I'm yeah. glad, I, I always like to sit for everything too, <laughs> <laughs> um, as long as possible. Uh, and Hamish is always- Get it up. Uh, up on his feet immediately. Uh, but it is so, even if you end up like b sitting down again, it's, it is, it is, uh, it was great to see you just like take it on in your whole Ooh. body and you do your hands were not in your pockets. You were totally fine. You knew exactly your, everything was. Made it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's often the best. Well guys, that was the last, Lily. Uh, thank you so much, Finn. And thank you, everyone, who's participated <laughs> you, today. Can you unmute everyone, Michelle, so they can say their thanks to Hamish is in the room, but Lily, you can give all the applause for him. <laughs> Great job. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, so much. Sorry, I missed all of you. Oh, yeah. Thanks for doing that. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> <time. laughs> Oh, oh. oh. I'm happy. Thank you so much for Thank doing this you. today, guys. And yeah, uh, Lily, yeah. Awesome. Lily, we enjoyed having you just for a bit. Hamish, oh my gosh, for everything, but I know. mean, I just, I'm so sad that I missed it. That was so much fun. We'll get a recording to you. You can okay, watch great. Hamish, you know, you know, stumble along until he appeared and made sense of it all. So, you know, I'm joking, Hamish, you were great. Guys, thank you so much for being so brave with your work today.